confused. Good luck. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, the move order I've been playing these days has been this third foul pawn. Aiming for the cheerful central rook, but if the opponent decides to play double swinging rook, um, then we just transpose directly to third foul rook opening, Joseki. Unless the diagonal gets closed. So I think that's my plan, is um, going to play third foul rook, unless he closes the diagonal, but now I'm actually not in central rook territory anyway, so um, probably should have just put the rook on the third foul directly. I don't know. I've done this before, perhaps it's dubious, hard to say. Um, I'm trying to recall. Okay, wait a second. Last I checked, there is a Joseki about this. It might have been that the bishop drop here is even the best move. Um... I'm not sure. The one thing I have to watch out for is this bishop five. Well, no, they haven't played third foul rook. They played fourth foul. So that trap, which in my second game of the latter week 18 where I missed an opening trap that I could have sprung on my opponent with a fantastic result. Um, that particular thing doesn't apply here. Um, okay, I think we're both confused. But also I think he has a problem in that, like, this is not a good square for the rook. So I could play a wrong diagonal bishop Joseki at this point, and it looks crushing. Um, huh. Well, actually, so if I drop here and then I take the pawn and then take the rook, he gets to do a bishop drop against me afterward. But I'll have one tempo to prepare. And my preparation could be something like moving this gold up to cover three of my pawns. So... Hmm. Okay. We're going to experiment a bit. Somehow I think perhaps we both missed the boat on this opening. Um, I, in that pushing this pawn forward two squares, is probably unnecessary. Um, that my opponent, in that, like, this actually looks really strong as a counter against this rook swinging back and forth. Um, it wasn't my aim to trick him. I was just trying to explore this to see um, what happens if I don't play. Well, I'm sorry. So I know that I don't know every Joseki, but what happens if I try to explore a little bit beyond my boundaries? So here I permitted a bishop exchange to occur um, with the thought that perhaps we're going to get some deep bishop exchange theory. And that seems not 
to have happened. Um, or we've gotten somewhere so deep that I don't even know where we are right now, but looks interesting. Oh, that also looks interesting. Uh, let's take your... It can't be a wrong diagonal bishop if it can go on both diagonals. Am I right? No. Uh, I'm just mostly having some fun. But, um... Yeah, so if I move my silver up like I normally do, then if they manage to exchange... I don't know. If I push the silver up to try to do Mino, things can get kind of crazy here. Um, so let's start running with the king and then worry about bishop drops later. Well, I don't know. We're not going to see a bishop exchange, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so let me start building out Mino in a way that, like, this bishop drop is or this bishop attack is not going to destroy me in a single move. And now I can move my king over, and then bring the gold up, and move the edge pawn, and all that good stuff. What I've been concerned about is if he moves the rook over, and supposing my bishop retreats, Maybe somehow he gets a sacrifice and promotes something, but I'm not seeing it. So before I lose my king, I'm going to try to build a castle. Let me check my volume level. Ah, that's why I haven't been hearing the clicking sound. I had the audio on 40%. Now the piece noises are going to be louder. Let me just verify I've closed Discord and other stuff. Yes, all the other apps are dismissed. All right, so the silver is going on a bit of a journey. Although, silver can't really buy, attack a wall of pawns all by itself. Um, it's going to need some assistance to do an attack. So let's just continue moving the king somewhere safer. Maybe push the edge pawn, but maybe not. Alright, so now there's room for a rook to drop back here. But he has all the drop squares covered this instant. Um, it's going to be difficult for him to continuously cover every square on the back row. But maybe this is why he put the king in the center. Uh, is with that in mind that covering squares could be challenging. Um... I'm trying to come up with, like, what do I do now? Um, if I retreat the horse to hit this pawn, he could move the gold forward to protect it. He could actually move the silver back to protect it, too. So I'm not winning a pawn there. Um, yeah, my king is still kind of in no man's land. I'm not... This is not where my king belongs. My king feels more at home over here. Okay, I'll check that the chat window shows up, and it does. All right, good. Yeah, sorry I was a bit rushed in uh, getting my stream laid out this morning. Uh, but it was good to get some more uh, rest in before... Uh, 
this teaching game. Um, I mean, I've always been a fan of this kind of shape. I was considering playing it myself. Um, hmm. Okay, let's continue building my castle. I'm not really expecting a rook to drop such that I would need to run this way, but... Um, Really don't see any harm in completing the castle either. So now I am prone to a, well, a knight fork here or a silver fork there. Could be things to be concerned about. Um, oh, I see. Okay, so he's working on getting his pieces, attacking a couple targets here. That makes sense. But the silver can no longer cover this pawn. Oh, the gold covers this. I could force him to bring the gold forward one more square. And then I could go back with the horse, and then the rook moves over, and I don't know what. But um, that's one thing that could happen. If I take the rook, he gets a bishop in hand. I'm not such a fan of this, because I would have nowhere to drop the rook. Um, I'm tempted to push my fourth foul pawn, but I want to find something safer. There just isn't anything safer. Um, if I bring the horse back to hit this pawn, he might even push it. And if I chase it, the silver goes and protects the pawn. So, uh, what do I do now? What's a good way to use my next move? I don't know. <laughs> I could push the fourth foul pawn. If bishop takes, then my horse goes back and then takes their pawn here. That would be legal. Would it be wise? I'm doubtful. It would open stuff I don't intend to open. Honestly, taking the rook is looking more and more appealing every turn. But it's kind of a waste of a move. Um... push my center pawn, but then my horse loses a square to retreat to. Um, I could move the silver forward. The silver doesn't really like being in the corner anyway. I just need to be super careful when I do this. Yeah, so this is the exchange that we've all been awaiting with some level of anxiety. Um, so I think I have to take that. No, I could actually retreat. I don't have to take the rook. I want to take the rook. I like rooks. But I don't have to take it. I could just retreat the horse. And the horse might be more powerful than the rook here. Um, I really don't know what I would do with the rook in this position. I could drop it right on this file, strike the silver, and I don't know what he'd do. Oh, he'd move his gold up to defend the silver. And I could swing the rook over to the other side, but there's no obvious target. So winning the rook is not, like, the most exciting thing here. As much as I do like having the rook, giving him a bishop in hand could be kind of scary. 
Uh, let's go back. Because this way, at least I have a plan. I just push this pawn up the file with the aid of my rook and my horse. Um, that's a pretty simple plan. I don't think I could mess that up. I think if I start exchanging pieces, this position gets complicated in a hurry. In chess, when you have an advantage, you have a very strong urge to exchange pieces because this will simplify the position. In shogi, exchanging pieces tends to make things more complicated. Mm, they're gonna use both silvers to attack this side. What do I do? My pieces are not as coordinated as they like to be here. Um, I'd rather have all these pieces rearranged, but I don't know how. I like my silver in the center, but then they play this pawn forward, and that's kind of scary. Um... Like my silver climbing this way, but yeah, it's, there's problems. How do we play this? Well, let's stick with the plan. If the plan is to push this pawn forward with the support of my rook, it doesn't seem like a bad plan. Not on its surface. Um... I see a difficulty with the plan already. All right. Probably could have seen that earlier. Let's close this diagonal before I mess something up. Now this unfortunately blocks my rook, but I had intended to move my rook to the second file anyway. Um, so if I take silver takes pawn drop right on this head, he's got to retreat. I don't understand. Oh, he doesn't take it immediately. Okay. That makes more sense. Um,
So I could take this pawn. I don't know if I want to. Um, but the silver... Oh, it's threatening to just walk straight up the file. Um, but also threatening to move up and then take this pawn. So if I pawn drop, they pawn drop. I haven't really done anything to... S well, I don't know if that stops a silver or not. I drop here. If he drops... Well, you know, he's just going to push this. That'd be the more logical way forward. Um, so better for me to just move my silver up, as long as I don't drop this. But then a silver exchange leaves me prone back here. I see. Yeah, silver exchange leaves me vulnerable to a fork. I'm not sure what to do about it. Could drop the rook back one. I guess that makes me a little safer. If the silver moves up, I might have ideas with this horse moving here, check, hitting his silver as well. So yeah, he's got to get this king to safety before doing anything too crazy. Um, and his rook is defended. Um, if I push, they drop a pawn, I climb, they take, they take. This is not super great. I'm thinking this is my most sensible option. There is some risk here because um, this some this file might somehow open or this diagonal might somehow open. But I'm gonna take this tempo to grab a pawn, and then I'm gonna go back and be happy. I don't know what to do for the rest here. But as long as I don't drop this point, um, this position should be playable. Maybe I push um, this sixth file pawn and move the gold up and so on and so forth, but this seems, I don't know, really slow. And I assume he has something faster he can do, although I don't see what. Indeed. Um, I could bring the horse forward again. He brings the silver up. I, I don't know. I could trade. Um... There is so much I do not know here. I want to keep this silver away. So if I take silver takes and I could offer a rook exchange and give him a lance even. Um, this seems like a sensible path forward. Wait, where is that going? Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so he finally got a pawn. 
that's been there a while, hasn't it? All right, uh, but now he's just played it on account of this being the test best timing for such a move. Um, I'm so confused. Yeah, but I've given him a knight. Oh, I see how. Okay. I see. So yeah, by opening this diagonal, I made possible this pawn drop. That's when this became lethal or destructive in any way, event. Um, I don't really want to chase down the piece, but... Um, <sighs> yeah, because now he opens the file. Very well played. So my early opening trap has given me five pawns in hand. And my opponent's defended admirably, and I wasted time snapping a pawn because I couldn't figure out what to do. But now with five pawns in hand and a rook behind this, I think I just need to push this directly up toward the knight. I think even I could manage that. The problem is he's going to place a knight, and he's probably going to put it on 5-5, five five, but that blocks the bishop. Um, but he's going to put the knight somewhere, and it's going to make this position difficult for me. But... Since he has no pawns, I should just race this up the file until something gets exchanged. Oh, right. So, yeah, of course he opens this file for his own pieces to use. Makes sense. If I put my pawn here, the knight could attack it, and I have a different... Well, I don't have too difficult a time defending this. I was going to suggest putting it down one more rank, but it's actually kind of prone to attack there as well. Um, hmm, I don't know what the safest and best place to put the pawn is. It's going to go on the file, I just don't know where. This protects against a knight drop that would hit my silver. So rather than adopting a defensive mindset, I'm going to try to attack a bit. So my best attack here is, again, to just push the pawn directly up the file toward the rook and the knight. Um, seems kind of hard to counter. I don't know what he's going to do. So I'm so excited about this because this takes one, two, three, and then it's promoted, and then just a couple more moves to promote the rook. So that's a very fast plan compared to some of my other ideas. So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited because I'm in Biyomi.
So I think these two pawns are doing a decent job keeping these silvers at bay. And the fact that, like, he doesn't have a pawn in hand is making this position difficult for him. Right, this threatens to place a knight to hit my silver, which would undermine my pawn here. Um... He's trying to get me either to open the diagonal or to open the file here. And I'm trying to resist on both fronts. Oh! Oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that. Um, I still think I just need to push my pawn in front of the rook. But maybe I move the rook over one? But that makes the square vulnerable. 30秒. Yeah, no, I think just pushing this pawn's really the idea here. Welcome everyone. We're playing uh, the teaching ladder week 19. Um, our opponent is the very respectable uh, Frieza. Uh, also a Wandan. I seem to have tricked him in the opening somehow, although that was not my intent. Um, but owing to that, I seem to have a very substantial advantage here. Um, so I guess their next idea is to either put or move a knight here and bear a third piece on this pawn. Um, they really don't have anything else they could hit this pawn with. So, uh, seems pretty clear this is what I should do to stop a knight from moving there. And then I should resume my idea of pushing the pawn in front of my rook. Um, so they're going to hit this and I'll have to move up, I think, my horse. But yeah, this is just a really clumsy position, since I can control everything that they can attack with. Um, so their attack is slowed down considerably. In fact, if they attack this pawn, I don't even need to defend it. I can just push this twice. Uh, right, so they're going to try to use their bishop now. Makes sense. Free pawn for me. We've been having free pawns for days here. Um, I don't know that I even want the pawn, but I don't want to give them a pawn in hand. Giving them a pawn in hand makes this dynamic quite different. On the other hand, if I promote, they promote, yeah, that gets messy. Let's not go there. Three pawn. Got five pawns in hand and no files to put them on. But no, what he's really threatening is to take here. And I don't know that there is a follow-up to that threat. Silver takes. If I do silver takes, he could drop the knight here. Um, well, even that's not so strong.
Ah, we have a new name. Or at least it's been a while. That's a nice emote. I think I've seen you here before, but I could be mistaken. Maybe his idea now is just bring the silver fork and try to, like, do something. Okay, we finally stooped to him just offering me the knight outright. Um, which is sensible. It's just not going to be good enough. Does give them a pawn in hand. Um, so... I'll need to exercise caution, but I'll be fine. I wanted to promote my rook, damn it. But um, one, two, three versus one, two. Dropping the pawn here is faster than. Actually, I could protect this a third time if I'm really stupid like that. Knight takes, silver takes, silver takes, rook takes. Yeah, that might be the best way to go here. I'm not sure. My rook is not in a happy place. Screw it. Let's have some fun. Alright. They're attacking my horse. My horse does not appreciate being attacked. Um, so if I'm reading this correctly, that's a free silver. So they finally got the silver in hand that I was ever so profoundly concerned about them getting in hand. And that does allow them now to silver drop right in front of my rook. Um, so I want to push my pawn and then have a plan after that would be nice. would be ideal. But um, pushing the pawn, they move the rook somewhere, and then I pawn drop on the knight's head. Seems sensible. Or I invert the move order. Pawn drop on the knight's head first. Um, which seems a lot safer, to be honest. Um, I don't know. So now I want to pawn drop in front of the bishop, so the bishop is not as effective. And so they don't have the ability to, like, drop the silver right in front of my rook. Uh, actually, silver 5-5 five five deals with a lot of stuff here. Silver 5-5 five five is really nice. That's a beautiful square for my silver. Yeah. Now, I kind of expected the sacrifice, but every time you sacrifice, um, my army gets stronger. All right. Now, it's true I don't want to just exchange my bishop for the rook. That would kind of ruin the mood. Um, but, um, yeah, this pawn advance is kind of a threat. So we have to come up with some kind of speedy threats of our own. Um, 30秒. 
I really don't want to put my knight back here. Hmm. Yuck. I didn't want to do this, but we're doing it. It does attack both squares. Um, yeah, so I'm announcing an intent to go right after the king here. You promote. I'm going to take the rook and chase your king down. That's my plan. You don't promote. We back off the edge and start talking something more reasonable here, but if you want war, we'll have war. So. Um, don't know why he's intending a pawn drop. Oh, that does protect the rook. Um, not sure. Well, okay, yeah, my plan was to kind of draw the silver away from the rook here. Fair enough. Um, I can still hit the silver. So the silver's in line with the king here. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't even care about the token. That's just how fun this position is. Um, so if I push, if silver takes, this knight is hanging. What if I just take this uh, here? So I push, if rook takes, I don't have a comeback. That would be bad. So let's just continue chasing the king. I know often the threat is stronger than the execution, but sometimes the execution is actually pretty decent. Um, so we're going to do some executing. Yeah, I want a rook here. This rook, it really is the right piece for me to start attacking. So they say if you have four attackers, your attack never runs out. We're not quite at four, but boy, are we getting close. Um... Yeah, I want to draw this gold away from the king. Plus, it'd be nice to have... Uh, like, if the gold is drawn away from the king, it becomes a target for my other pieces. Um, like, I could drop a silver here and then take this gold. It's one possibility. Uh, I could... In fact, the gold no longer protects the square. So I could drop a rook here, or they block, and then I push the pawn up to hit whatever they blocked with. Um, this is possible. It'd be nice to surround the king, but... I don't know that I can manage that, but we should try anyway. So either they block, or I'm going to have two pieces attacking this square. Um, which I guess they're okay with for some reason. Um...
All right, now maybe I want to take this and sacrifice my gold so I promote, and I don't know. Maybe I want to take the knight. I don't have a follow-up. Yuck. Yuck. This is not what I had planned. But with the knight moving, and with me promoting a token right next to the castle, perhaps there's some merit to this. Um... Actually, silver drop, if they move the gold. Rook takes gold, king takes gold drop, king moves back here, and the king is in a kind of a mating nut. So yeah, the silver drop here is very strong. Oh, he could move the gold to the right and trap his king in the center of the board. We're going king hunting, guys. Um... If this gold moves to dodge capture, we sack. King takes gold drop. And this king is not long for the world. Um, meaning, he's going to give me this gold. And we're going to have some fun attacking. The mutual attack phase here has begun. Um... Okay, I missed that. I was having too much fun, perhaps. If such a thing can be had while trying to checkmate. Um, all right, I missed this, so how do I recover? Ah. <sighs> This is tricky. We're going to leave it unpromoted, hitting the square. My attack has slowed down because I'm bad at attacking, but I have separated the gold from the king. So I did achieve something. It's just not what I set out to achieve. Not even close. Um, now we have three pieces attacking this pawn. I'm in a mating net, aren't I? I'm in a mating net, aren't I? Um, let's figure that out. Should have figured that out before I moved. Definitely should have figured that out before I moved. Um, but maybe we're fine. Thirty I think this puts up the best resistance. I was so fixated on this quadrant and this quadrant and this quadrant that I forgot there was another quadrant to this board. It's a big board. But also I might still be winning here. If I am winning, it's by the narrowest of margins. But, um, a win's still a win. 
Right, so I have only one way forward here. So I should go forward. We need to expose the rook across the rank. This is the only way for me to attack. This is the only way for them to defend. And now we see like if I can survive this somehow. Um I thought taking the gold might Thank save you, me somehow. Um, yeah, I cannot read this for the life of me. So I have one legal move. Let's play the one legal move. Oh, nicely done. Okay, this is how you, ch I see. Well played. All right, and we have him rank up to two down. Very nice. Cool, so this is a teaching ladder game. So the idea is after the game, uh, we have a post-game analysis. Uh, wow. Uh, so obviously I missed the mating attack at the... Yeah. <sighs> obviously I missed the mate threat at the end, which kind of ruined everything, but... Um... You know, that's uh, kind of how my games go. Um, we're still learning. So, oh. Wait. I'm the... No, yeah, I am the game host. Uh, wait, oh, I should hand over the hat in case there's something he wanted to show. So, yeah, he says, leaving host's position. Um... So, yeah, I, it wasn't my really my intent at all to try to play Opening Trap, but apparently I succeeded. Um, yeah, this didn't quite work the way he planned it. Um, yeah, I mean, if there was a lot more on the... Right now, it's just my reputation at stake with each game. Uh, uh, my goal was to try uh, bishop exchange lines, uh, although this seems to have happened. Uh, so, yeah. It wasn't really my goal to, like, punish the rook move. It's just that that's just such a bad rook move here. That, um, I actually get to promote right in the opening. Ah. Yeah, I did wonder about that, yeah. 
it was super tempting to just take it, but then I realized, well, where do I even put the rook after taking it? So I said, you know, we'll just not take it this turn, and we'll not take it this turn, and just this tension stayed on the board for quite a while. Usually I push my center pawn so that I can easily stop this bishop 5-5, five five, which always checkmates me. And then this game we saw eventually bishop 5-5 five five happened and I got checkmated. Usually push my center pawn so I don't have to think about that. Um, shame on me this game. Yeah. And freeze it back up to Tudon. He's been there before. He's a strong player. He's resilient. Like, he put up one hell of a fight despite being in a very difficult position this game. Yeah, this thing. Perhaps I shouldn't have pushed this up right away, because it seems to have invited this exchange, which I wasn't really looking forward to. But I was able to decline doing the exchange, but, like, this complicated everything. And probably any other move other than pushing that silver would have been um, a lot simpler. Oh, yeah. That would have been very good here. Okay. I see. What confuses me in this board is that there are nine rows instead of eight. And so the idea of promoting a pawn just seems so alien to me. But no, this is exactly the right idea. Not because it immediately promotes. Although that is the threat. Uh... Yeah, no, that's a very good idea here. Uh, and it comes a lot faster than I anticipate, is my point. Yeah. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And I'll have to keep that in my bag of tricks. Not necessarily for opening traps, but just middle game strategy. Like, when we get a complicated position, try to figure out what to do where. Well, if they have no pawns in hand, and I can easily advance a pawn on the second file, that's probably the right thing to do. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll see whether or not I can hold my one Don promotion. <laughs> I did not expect it to come so quickly, and I expect it probably will go and come again, but we'll eventually manage to play well. Shogi is really complicated, in case it's not obvious. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on the receiving end of a vicious attack just like this. This sort of thing seems to happen to every beginner, where either their second or third file gets compromised right in the opening. Um, so, again, it wasn't my intention to trap my opponent, but that particular rook move just left uh, the fork uncovered. And bishop exchange joseki are super complicated and... This wasn't exactly what I was aiming for. Um, See, so yeah, I eventually did get this pawn pushed, but uh, the circumstances are so different here. Even here, like, I should probably still... Uh, yeah, probably I should still pursue a second file. Yeah. 
I'm not sure what I was thinking. Other than it just seems really hard to promote things, but I have to remember that they promote on the 7th rank, not on uh, the 8th or 9th. So... Yeah. So just huge strategic blunder on my part, which, um, to my opponent's credit, they're doing everything they can to defend against, although it's really difficult here. So, yeah. Uh, very nice defense. Uh, given how difficult this position is. <laughs> yeah, you had to just bank on me missing the second file idea and try to find a way to make things complicated. Um, and he did. So, um, yeah, one thing that seems to work in Shogi is pushing pawns on files adjacent to each other if you're pursuing an attack. Yeah. Yeah, I was easily distracted. Even during the game, it occurred to me, like, the second file is where I should attack, but... I kept rejecting it as being too slow and keeping fearing that my opponent was up to something. But no, like, I actually have time to play an attack here. I was afraid of a silver exchange. Oh. I should tell him that. Yeah. So, this thing. don't really know. If I have to defend against this, how do I defend? Sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Yeah. There's way too much going on in this board for me to have time to play a move like that. Um, uh, I was uh, considering a uh, pawn drop uh, over here, but I'm not sure if this is nothing. That just seems like that might accelerate what he's doing. Um, Because, like, you have this, um, I don't really know. If I had to defend, I don't know how I would defend this. But probably I just need to attack on the second file again. I just repeatedly whiffed on that attacking idea. Yeah, I root. Oh. Is this... Huh. This... So... We're talking like this here? Um... Isn't there kind of a problem with that? Oh, okay. He's got two attacking here and two attack... Oh, I see. Alright, yeah, so my 
what I was afraid of just factually is not there. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, okay, so what I was most afraid of actually does not destroy me. And therefore, this is probably fine, but still complicated, because he brings his other silver in, and you can find a way to make it difficult. Ah, the promoted bishop is too strong against this attack. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, good point. So I could actually have to hold this, held this position if I really wanted to. He'd bring in other pieces like the knight and the silver and other stuff, but like theoretically I could hold this long enough for me my second attack, second file attack to break in. Instead I went pawn grabbing and went back to try to defend this mess. Um... Yeah, this was resourceful and upsetting, <laughs> to be honest. Um, obviously, I missed this, but um, I mean, what can I do at this point? So that was a, a resourceful attempt on his part in a position where, like, there wasn't a whole lot going on. And he found a way to make something happen. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so... Even after having gotten my knight, like... He still needed a pawn in hand. Somehow I... Oh, this is the way he managed to get it. No. Something like this is how he got the pawn during the game. Um, okay, so yeah, if this would result in a pinned piece, so he could sacrifice the knight back for a pawn, so that he could have a pawn in the hand, but um, I don't know that he wants to do that. It's just such a difficult position. Um... Well, yeah, actually... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the silver is not defended by the knight. That makes sense. So, yeah, he had to... Maybe this move was unnecessary. I don't know. I just had difficulty predicting where his attack would land next. But maybe this made me more vulnerable rather than less. And maybe I just needed to keep moving this, even though it takes three entire turns for this pawn to make it. I just giving my opponent three full moves. Oh! Okay, he actually liked this. I didn't like this pawn move, but I played it any. Well, I did like it. I was scared, but I played it anyway. Yeah, sometimes you're right, building a better castle is what matters. Um, I had knight 7-6. I'm looking... Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, that clearly needed to be played. All right, that explains it. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's embarrassing. Yeah, so, like, here, after I have the knight, 
<laughs> so there was actually some merit in my little horse escapade taking the pawn and going back and that like now the square is actually useful for a knight oops yeah that definitely absolutely was the right move here it would have been a hard counter to what he had done it's so unusual because usually there's a pawn right there this is not possible but here since it is possible it's just decisive yeah that um that would have been an interesting way for the game to end <laughs> kind of anticlimactic given what actually happened in the game um yeah oh right no that makes sense yeah I missed it. I'm a little upset, but not really. Let's see, I missed it here. Well, no. Here I missed it, because I had the fork. I was so fixated on trying to win the rook. Um, yeah, so I had this for a couple moves. So, I don't know how many turns in a row I'd been in Bioyomi, but yeah, I need to spot forks like that. Uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'm still winning this. Oh, man. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, so obviously if Rook takes, I could just do Pawn takes Knight promote. So he has to do this. Instead. Okay, and the Rook moving up ruined my ability to do the Knight fork. Um... Yeah, this is a resourceful rook move. And now the position's... Now... Uh, the position is slightly less clear. Uh, up to this point, I've had a nice advantage, but it's gradually going. So, somehow I managed to make the game difficult for myself. Well, honestly, my opponent helped quite a bit, but still. I have to find some fault with my own play. Yeah. I just wasted too many moves and missed too many tactics. And eventually it all added up to a loss. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh. The one, the position that we selected in the game wasn't really any easier. I just couldn't figure shit out here. And I thought I had a mating net, and, like, I didn't. So, that was bad. Hmm. 
But yeah, I should... Um, well, here I don't have time to build up my castle, but uh, in general it'll be nice too. But yeah, I never activated my rook. Not sure I have a good move. This guy's just been doing nothing the whole game. But yeah, you're right that this gives you a chance to use the bishop. And since the bishop's used, now this gives your king somewhere to go, and yuck. Uh, yeah, I just have a really difficult game in general here. Oh, okay, yeah, I did consider this. Why did I not do this? Because I'm dumb? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's some logical explanation somewhere, but kind of eludes me at the moment. Um... Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, he does have a lot of pieces in hand. Wow. Alright, so Pink Waffle Pig, so yeah. They're suggesting this knight drop and stuff, but yeah, it is still complicated. And the king might not retreat, so. Like, the knight check isn't necessarily doing anything there. It's, I don't know where my rook belongs. My king's under attack. I assume you just moved the king out of the way. But what do I know? I didn't defend anywhere near as well as I should have this game. Yeah, maybe I made it here. So maybe taking that's fine. Um... Although, with this pawn removed, my king does have some running chances, but, yeah, I don't know. Either way, yeah, this feels like a reasonable thing to do, although my rook hangs. This whole position's complicated. But, it's, oh, well, yeah, maybe... So they say the check is to chase, and that probably holds true here. And let's just keep checking and keep chasing, and at the end of the day, then realize, oh wait, we haven't gotten what we were aiming for. <laughs> it's when you go to the grocery store to get something, and you get something else instead. Uh, that sort of thing. We don't want to keep checking. Yeah. With him having four pieces in hand, this gets spooky. Yes. Yes, we know. Yeah, check's probably bad. Um. Wait, so this is a variation. Pawn takes... Wait, was this not the game? Yeah. Okay, and they did a pawn drop, and I tried to attack with my bishop. And then I got all excited about thinking I had the right pieces to checkmate. And it wasn't so easy. Um, no, this is not right. Oh, wait, maybe I take the knight. Actually, yeah. I tried to look at this in the Bioyomi, and I messed up. Um, so, well, that's interesting. Mm, I mean, maybe taking the rook is best, because this token's actually quite nice, too. Um, I just don't know where we attack here. Um, 
Uh, oh, okay. Freeze it likes this move. It does win a lot of material, that's for sure. But, um, I guess. Yeah. I'm better, although the game is still not easy. Although I am better here, which is pretty nice. So, yeah, they have a choice between this, which just wins the rook, which is pinned. Uh, and evidently, they don't have any pin breaking move here. Um, we have a very excited spectator suggesting lots of ideas. Um, but I think the overarching idea is that this position is difficult. Um, yeah, and this king, I don't know exactly how this king is going to survive whatever attack I bring, but I don't have very many attackers. Yeah, pawn 3-6 is crucial. So, so given how crucial this is, um... I wonder, so is this playable then? Hmm. Uh, oh, night drops, or the night moves kind of nice. Um, so I don't know. What's going on here? Oh! Alright, so yeah, this position's more critical than I thought. Um, if that kind of pawn drop is actually winning, I'm not sure it is, but if it is, this position's pretty hard. Um, yeah, no. That would be losing this piece and allowing me to promote. Yeah, no, I don't think it's quite so simple here. So maybe this pawn drop is not that great. Um, and if the pawn drop doesn't work... Well, I'm sorry. So if the rook takes is fine, maybe you have to take here. And yeah, this is still tricky. I guess we drop this. It's a hard position. Yeah, I mean, I could give up the horse. But uh, freeze it, could maybe find a mate here. I can't. I don't think there's a mate. My bishop's attacked. My rook's still in the corner. Um, it's fun to attack, but I don't know that fun moves actually achieve anything. That's a free bishop. I'll just take all the pieces, like I usually do. Oh, that's clever. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still not sold on the idea that this is winning. You just keep giving me stuff. I mean, what's the plan? Yeah, okay. I guess. You're giving me a lot of material here. I 
pretty sure. I don't know. I'm confident that my king is making an advance, but maybe I'm overconfident. I mean, you could sacrifice material to try to stop my king from advancing, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's so simple. Yeah, they just keep giving me more and more pieces. I know it should be scary, but if we never stop to breathe, is there anything to fear? I'm just going to build a little castle on the other end of the board. It'll be fine. Nothing to fear. I think winning is a bit of a stretch to describe this thing where the king is escaping. I mean, yes, we favor being this attacking side of this position, but yeah. And yeah, the knight 5-3 doesn't seem greatest, although it does bring the gold closer to the king. Yeah. I don't really think you could just declare victory on that. Um, I think chasing the king is kind of futile there. But we saw what happened in the game. It wasn't much better than that. Um, so yeah, I need to learn how to attack better. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this... You're right, that makes sense. Oh, and actually, this is the file that's actually kind of open. So that's a good place to put the rook anyway. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, no, you're right. The king can't advance. I was afraid of king 7-7, seven, seven, but it just doesn't work. And because it doesn't work, this is actually really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, so because I had a silver in hand, and because the 7-6 square is exposed, this would have been a very nice way to conclude the attack with me now threatening rook takes silver, then dragon takes gold, and you know. It would have been really nice if I could have just focused on attacking. Um... Shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda seen it. Would have been really nice. Um... I mean, even in that last position, um, yeah, actually, I think going back one uh, here, this just seems to win on the spot. Um, on account of gold retreat not being available, you just pile up more on it, and, like, it looks crushing. Yeah. That's Nifu. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about putting it on 5-9. Yeah. I mean, it's still a difficult position. Um, even with the pawn on 5-9. Yeah. Um, 
And then I have like stuff like this too. So, oh, actually pawn drops in the center file don't radically change anything. Some positions they might, but here they don't. So, yeah, I whiffed super hard in allowing this and then misevaluating it as being very, very much better for me. This gold actually is useful on the square, and I thought I knew what I was doing, and I clearly didn't. So, um, it would behoove me to study end games. Behoove me to advance my pieces and use all of them instead of fighting without my rook. And eventually, I, you know, I don't know what happened. One five six seemed to be a good, yeah. So we keep getting sidetracked looking at variations, which are kind of interesting, but don't seem to tell us much about the position. Um, like, yeah, maybe we could win some material, but my king's under fire. I don't really have time to go trying to pick off pieces. Um... I don't know in the future if I should actually seek to like have some of these rooms locked so that we don't have so many arrows and stuff. I don't know. Some of it's really interesting, but some of it is just like, yes, I can win material. I get that. But checkmating is actually kind of hard. Um... Especially when I'm flooded so badly. Like, I chased the king away. I should not have done this. I did something similar in the game, but even though this is a variation, technically. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a whole website that I'm contributing a little bit to, but mostly developed by Gene Fortin, uh, called Play Shogi, and it's all about checkmating. And that's a, perhaps a better place to practice the checkmates than in the post-game analysis. Um, but yeah, it was kind of eye-opening just how badly I flubbed this. Yeah, I'd only looked at gold 6-8. Uh, this completely did not occur to me. And suddenly I have real challenges trying to figure out what to do. Uh, so, yeah. I Somehow I thought with the rank being completely open that this would be easy. Okay. Uh, yeah, understandable that as it becomes daytime over here, it becomes, uh, uh, yeah, nice, nice. This is good. All right. Yeah, what time is it here? Yeah, it's super late. He plays in Japan, so it is what it is. Um, I try. He'd offered a much earlier match time than I was able to do. Our schedules never line up really well, so it usually involves one of us playing or analyzing in the night. Probably I should make a remark to the tournament organizer to see what we can do about that. Um, 
But yeah, so comments from chat. Yeah, so I agree that when pieces can be used to attack me, um, exchanging them is pretty dubious. And this bishop knight mate is such a common pattern against Mino Castle that I should recognize it. Even early in the morning, even late at night, I should always recognize this bishop, knight, other generals, etc. Really easy attack. Um, so, yeah, I need to work on that. Um, by this point, the game's gotten out of control. The last point where I could maybe have got it back... Okay, yeah, here was the fatal mistake was thinking that I could mate, and therefore it didn't matter uh, what I did. Um, so, yeah, this is just so bad. Um, I finally got this promoted. Let's say that I was going to do that. Even if that's not best, let's say I committed to doing it this way. Now, how do I continue? I was still concerned about this, even though this is not great. And, like, my concern is that this sort of stuff follows, and it's just a huge freaking mess. And that's why I wanted to block all of these ideas. Better might be to block here, even though technically, like, I might be giving up my knight. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, blocking the bishop until I get my rook somewhere useful is probably a good idea. Promoting my pawn I was very excited about. But anyway, so once we get this far in the game and we finally got this bishop, this is a nice continuation. Um, and like during the game it occurred to me I could use my knight to guard the square. And I didn't do that because it just... This is a terrible square for a knight, and invites him to do other piece drops. Yeah, this position's gotten out of my control at this point. This, you know, this is a reasonable move. During the game I thought highly of it, because it covers so many squares near my king, but the bishop doesn't stay here. Uh, yeah, the pawn advance in general might have been useful. This exchange just invited calamity. Yeah, so... Um, I should be careful with that center pawn. Especially when I do Mino Castle. Um, what else could I try here? That was a good pawn defense. left me confused and surprised and really at some point earlier or later um yeah in fact having the bishop in hand is nice this would have been a good opportunity to activate my rook um so this activates my rook and it only costs me a gold um, and maybe more, but, um, hmm. yeah, it shows me for not playing actively enough. So, yeah, if my idea is to stop the bishop, this is kind of necessary. After having missed this, everything gets really messy, so this is how the game concluded. Uh, with the very skillfully executed attack. Um, even if I weren't in checkmate, I'm not sure I have a mate of my own. Yeah, I don't. So, it doesn't matter who gets the most pieces, it's just whoever puts them on the best squares and gets the king. That's what counts. I'll keep working on that, but yeah, freeze it's back up to two down again, so congratulations to him. Uh, thanks for many suggestions during the game. A special thanks to my opponent for uh, analyzing this game 
with us for such a long time.